You know what's funny? I find it really funny that I've been sitting in my computer chair in my bedroom, surrounded by my walls and walls of action figures and anime figures, talking about the same things over and over again. We've made videos about Alexis Lafreniere and how he could do if he was drafted by the Detroit Red Wings, the influence he can have on this team as a prospect, as a player in two years and 10 years and two months, etc. We've talked about Tim Stutzla and the Red Wings and how Steve Eiserman may or may not be interested in taking him first overall if the Red Wings get that pick, and the fan reception as to how that could go down. We've talked about these prospects, and we've talked about the Wings together. But when it comes to the top three of the 2020 NHL entry draft, we are missing out on one guy. One guy who we actually haven't talked about in regards to the Detroit Red Wings in the past for these YouTube videos, and that is a hole that we are going to be covering up here today in this one. Let's talk today about Quinton Byfield and how this six foot four big center could help out the Detroit Red Wings if they decide to draft him and not Lafreniere or Stutzla. Now, let's talk a little bit about where exactly Quinton Byfield is projected to go, because when it comes to all the mock drafts, everybody has Quinton Byfield at number two, pretty much except for Craig Button. Craig Button is like the only one that has Tim Stutzla sharing that spot. ISS Hockey also has Quinton Byfield at number four, which to me is quite ridiculous. But at the same time, this draft is really, really good. So all the guys in the top seven are projected to having extremely high potential. But Quinton Byfield is a guy who will most likely be drafted second overall, bearing no surprises with a certain German playing over there in Adler Mannheim. If you ask the majority of the scouting world and the fans, they would say that Quinton Byfield is most likely going to go second because he's got an incredibly high ceiling. He is a crazy young player for this draft, one of the youngest on the floor, and he was so good in the OHL this season that he only projects to be getting better and better. Top line, future franchise defining potential does lie within Quinton Byfield and his game, and the way he plays the game as a big six foot four center is very similar to guys, let's just say like Evgeny Malkin, for example. Byfield has so many NHL projectable qualities, and it's why he has been the second overall consensus for a long time now. But there is a legitimate party of people who do believe that if there's anybody who would challenge Lafreniere for that first overall spot, it would most likely be Quinton Byfield and not some German over there playing in Adler Mannheim. Don't get me wrong, Stutzla is great and I love Stutzla, but we'll have another video in a few days talking about my opinions on the fans' perception of Stutzla because that is a very different topic as well. But if Quinton Byfield is going to go to Detroit, it either is going to mean that A, the Red Wings are drafting first overall, which is unlikely, let's just say, or B, the Red Wings are drafting second overall. That's more likely in this situation, and in general, it's something that I think people can mostly agree with a little bit more. Obviously, the party proclaiming that Byfield should go first overall does exist, but you have to be very, very bold to actually make that decision instead of Lafreniere. But Red Wings fans are in a position where if they're treated to anybody in this top three, they're going to be very, very surprised, and rightfully so. Quinton Byfield is no exception to that. The guy is already at such a high level of play in the OHL, immediately coming off of his great Rookie of the Year campaign from one season ago. Byfield, although incredibly skilled already, is still so raw, and people are drooling over the possibilities of what could be. That's the biggest thing you have to take a look at with Quinton Byfield here, is that he's already so good, but he's so young, and he can become so much better. Everything that a center can excel at, Quinton Byfield excels at. He is so good at moving around the ice, and his stride is so powerful. 
it's not even one of those situations where it's like, oh, for a big guy, he's pretty fast. No, just as a hockey player in general, he's really fast. He moves very efficiently. His stride is so powerful. His shot, his passing, his IQ, they're all so strong, and Quinton Byfield has this fearlessness that allows him to cut into the middle with ease, deke out guys, and at the same time, have a very high level of intensity and awareness to make sure that even if he's going through guys, he's not putting his team in a dangerous spot. If everything goes right for Quinton Byfield, the sky is the limit for this player. We're looking at a player who can potentially reach 100 points in the NHL if everything goes right. He is so, so skilled at such a young age that there's a reason people have been scouting this guy since he was 16 years old. Now take that kind of profile, a big puck moving center who can skate around the ice with wheels and you put that on the Detroit Red Wings. All of a sudden your center core in the future looks like Byfield, Larkin, Valeno, and who cares? Joe Valeno is a guy who can legitimately max out as a top six caliber player and if you have a player like that on your third line then you're doing something right. If Dylan Larkin is playing on your top six and not your top three, then you're doing something right. Imagine having a team where your top line consists of Quinton Byfield at center, Philip Zadina on your right wing, and who cares on the left wing? We'll put Anthony Mantha there just for argument's sake. Let's wait five years until Quinton Byfield is turning 23 years old. Anthony Mantha is 30 and Philip Zadina is 25. Does that not sound like a crazy elite franchise defining top line? That sounds like a crazy good line, Mantha, Byfield, and Zadina? Have your second line consist of that Dylan Larkin that we talked about before, and I don't know, some other guys you can put over there. You can put Tyler Bertuzzi there for sure. Fill out the rest of your forward core with the guys like Joe Valeno, Jonathan Berggren, Albin Greva, Robert Mastro Simoni, Taro Hirose, I guess, if he's able to make the team in that time. And all of a sudden, your forward core looks so much better than it does now. You have the depth pieces in place. You have Giovanni Smith and Elmer Soderblom and whoever else you can pick up in free agency. But just from what the Red Wings have already, if you add a Quinton Byfield, that's a recipe for success five years down the line at least. If you're able to add yourself any of these big free agents that's going to expire in the next few years, and then you develop Cider to Omisto and all the other young D-men that you have on the team properly, and they eventually make the squad, you could have a crazy good Red Wings team centered around Cider on D, Byfield at center, Zadina at wing, and I guess you could say Philip Larson in net. There's potential here for building towards the future in a way that people are not ready to comprehend yet. In a world where Dylan Larkin is so good, but he's only your second line center. Having two first-line centers on your team is never a bad thing, and it's something that Red Wings fans can achieve if the Red Wings decide to draft a Quinton Byfield and they develop him properly. Emphasis on the properly part, because there is a world that does exist where Quinton Byfield does not fulfill his potential, it's just that the ceiling of this guy is so high, arguably higher than Lafreniere's and Stutzla's, etc., that you can't ignore the possibility of this player coming to Detroit, so that's why I decided to make this video here today. Do I think that Byfield is going to be Detroit's choice? Ultimately, if I was a betting man, I would say no, but at the same time, if he does end up going to Detroit, then my oh my, what a crazy good decision that would be. You really can't go wrong if you're the Detroit Red Wings in this spot, whether you're getting first, second, third, or fourth, or maybe even just first or second, there's really no room to screw this up. And if there's anything that Red Wings fans have taught me in the comments of my videos, specifically the one about the Red Wings being guaranteed a top two draft pick, it's that Red Wings fans will trust Iserman with their lives. And with the circumstances we have laid out on this draft, I don't really see any reason to see why that's wrong. 
So comment down below what you think about Quinton Byfield. What do you think he can do with the Red Wings if he gets selected by this team? Do you want the Red Wings to select Byfield? If not, let me know why in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed this video. Social Dietrich 99. And bye.